Hi folks, this week's river tutorial is the Adams Dry Fly. Without further ado, let's get into it. So in the vise is a Hanak H130 barbless hook at size 10. It's a fine wire hook and it's in black nickel. The thread we're going to be using today is the Semperfly Nano Silk and as you can see it's black and it's at 18 -0. First thing I'm going to do is get a tiny little spot of super glue onto the shank of my hook. I'm going to catch the thread in just in behind the eye and run my wraps all the way down to where a barb would be on a normal hook. Once I've got to the end, I can come in with my scissors and remove my tag end. Okay, all I'm using for the tail is a combination of a larger grizzle cape feather and an old cock hackle, a brown cock hackle. And I've, I've picked two feathers that I've been working away with here. And what I want to do is try and do it on camera. I'm going to marry the feathers up and I'm going to take a selection of both both fibres and rip them off together. Now what I want to do is marry them up as best I can and blend them in. That looks okay. Now I want the uh, tail to protrude about a centimetre past the bend of the hook. So I'm going to catch that in there like so. Once I've got it where I want it, I'm going to come in behind and get one turn underneath the shank. I'm going to just do that again, it's not splayed out as I've hoped. Just encourage it a little. And then I can remove some of the waste. Excuse my fingers. And then just get that all tidied up. And I'm going to come approximately just over an eighth of an inch from the end of the hook here. Or maybe just a, a shy too far away there. There we go. Okay, I've selected two small feathers from the uh, bottom of the grizzle cape here. I have them in my hands. And what I want to do is you'll notice there's a natural curve in the feather. This one's probably a bit better actually. You see a natural curve in the feather. I'm going to face them to each other and marry up the tips. Now that sounds simple, but when you're ham-fisted like I am, it takes a bit of doing. So, once you've married up the tips, and I've still not managed it, there we go. So I've got them facing each other, and what I want to do is tie these in together. Now, you want it to be no, no bigger than the length of the body. So I'm going to capture that in there, like so couple of turns, just see how they're sitting, just encourage them round like so, then you can lift your wings up and get a couple of turns in at the back. Okay, once that's in place, come in with your trusty snips and remove your excess. Okay, I've managed to get them lashed onto the hook, which is the main thing. So tidy up the front here, and then what we're gonna do is work a little bit harder on our wings, just getting them to sit a little bit nicer for you. Just gonna cross that over. Excuse 
excuse my fingers while I, I mess about with this. And I've just about got them sitting how I want. Now sorry that was a bit of a faff but uh, it's better getting it right. So I brought my thread to the back of the body and the points to note is the wings are now erect and they're split in the middle here. I know it took a bit of doing but that's all well and good. Now you'll notice there's some bits and bobs of fibres coming off. I'm not overly worried about that because it will be saved by the hackle. So the uh, material I'm going to be using for the body is uh, the Trout Stalkers. This is a custom blend, it's called Lindsay's Killer Shrimp. Now the thing about this blend is that it was made for the shrimp at Grafham but I used it on a couple of parachute atoms and it's proved to be really effective on the River Avon. So I don't see why not for the, the Adams fly. Now I've dubbed this on nice and tight and what I'm going to do is bring up my body. Just take your time, there's no rush. And what I want to do is build a little taper on the body and I'm going to stop there. Now you'll notice I've stopped quite far back for the wing, about an eighth of an inch. It's quite a bushy fly this and you want to leave yourself plenty of room for your hackling. Now for the hackle again I've selected a feather from the grizzle cape and a feather from this old rooster cape. You can see it's on its last legs but um, it's just about got enough left to give me these two feathers. So what I want to do is, as you can see, I've kind of married them up as best I can and I'm going to have the good side towards me at the moment, so it's this way and I'm going to tie these in together. So two turns at the front, see how it's sitting then what I want to do is, is just finish that off by catching the stock in quite, quite a ways up. Then, excuse my fingers, just going to remove the stocks. Now what I want to do next is come all the way back and I'm just going to bend out my feathers towards me. Just a turn and I'm going to put a couple of turns just in behind the stock. Now what this does is it helps, I don't know how well you can see there, but the feathers are now, the good side is now facing the front of the hook and they're sticking at a 90 degree angle from the shank which will give me a nice hackling. Now if you want to be um, really finicky with this and make a lovely looking fly that's uh, meant for a case rather than the top of the river. Strip one side of your hackling and you'll get a much better finish but all the flies I tie or generally most of the flies I tie are for fishing with so I'm going to just keep both sides. The more hackle fibres there is in, in the finished article will help it float. So. I've just attached my hackle pliers to both tips of the feather. I can now come forward and because I've taken the time and caught in that couple of turns just in behind the, uh, the stem of the hackle, it's sitting lovely for me now. So I'm just going to come underneath my wings. I don't want to catch them in. I want them to sit upright. So just make sure you don't fold the wings back. Just encourage your hackle to 
go to the rear just in pushing pushing it back so I get lots of hackle turns in here as I get to the end I'm going to come over with my thread just to catch in the tips like so I'm going to do two or three turns there then slick everything back get my thread in front of my hackling and then very carefully come in with the tips it's really important to have uh, good scissors while you're tying especially this sort of fly you need the tips to be razor sharp so these do a great job so that's looking not too bad now so next then I'm going to finish off by slicking it all back and I'm going to make myself a very nice small head now you can either use a whip finish tool at this point or you can put a half hitch in now I'm just adding a little bit of UV varnish to my thread to help me finish again try and keep your hackling out of the way and once you're content that the head's looking neat enough for you grab your whip finish tool or put a half hitch in and bury your thread as I've done then you can cure that off just come in with your brush just to try and make it look a little bit neater if you're of a mind to ease out some of that dubbing and there you have the finished article I didn't enjoy that I've got to say because it's not a fly tie a lot and it was probably very evident with the way I've shown you here now it's probably a very effective fly but I still maintain that the parachute Adams is, is, uh, is much better but you know each to their own there we go. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so now. And I'll see you all next time.